five, four, three, two, one. Hello, 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 and welcome back to Space Engineers on the Xbox on the Series X in the wake of the Warfare 2 broadside update 1.2.0. Lots of fixes, lots of patch notes, some bugs are back. The texture bug on the Series X has returned on the retail version, but strangely enough, doesn't actually seem to affect this on the beta, but we're on the retail and today it isn't really a tutorial but it is kind of this is me messing around with the new turret controller block again i'm fascinated by this thing um in the wake of someone asking um on the group roger armstrong big shout out to you how to make a turret in warfare 2 that fires staggered shots now you can't do this off the trigger the ai will automatically stagger the auto cannons one after the other like aa style gunfire but the best way to do it is to see it done with timer blocks now i'm going to uh first of all i'm going to carve me out uh, hold on. There we go. I'm going to carve me out a square here. Now, when you're building this thing for real in survival, you're going to want to use an advanced rotor because they have conveyors. But for now, we're going to throw in an advanced rotor here. And the first thing you want to do is you want to go into this. Uh, you can press X to bring up the inventory and then tap RT to get to the control panel. Or you can hold down both bumpers and press the two squares and you'll see the control panel. We want to call this Advanced Router Azimuth. We'll just call it AZ. As I said before, it's a rotational setting. And because we're going to be messing around with the turret, we want to lift this thing off the deck a bit. Um... We're on a static grid, so we shouldn't have to worry about share inertia tensor and any torque. So we want rotor displacement. and We'll just stick that up to 20 centimeters. You'll see it there. Right, next thing we're going to want, we're going to want a source of power anyway to make this work. So we're going to throw in one of these shiny, tiny, small warfare reactors just on the corner here just to give us some power. And then we're going to want a control seat or a cockpit. Um, see, control station, flight seat, rover cockpits, we've got buggy cockpits, passenger seats, off seats. Let's go for. which one I want I'm going to go for the standard I like my standard it's fun right we got that now we're going to need one more thing to make a turret work and this is a hinge because you can as I said before do the turret hinge so and so You've got your upper and your lower limit. And if I remember rightly, lower limits are measured by the small marker here. I think that's your lower limit. And now we've got our hinge. We've got some power. We can look at setting where we want things to go. So we don't really want our hinge to move backwards not for an AA style turret and we don't want this thing pitching all over the place because we might want to build um, blocks around it to make it look prettier but for now we're going to jump into our control seat go to our hinge and we're going to call this hinge E L for elevation so 
There we go. Uh, you could put share inertia tensor on this one. I suggest probably putting it on if you're using a mobile grid. Uh, I wouldn't so much drop it on rotors on a mobile grid with the custom turrets. It can cause phantom forces and your ship will pitch and twist and do all sorts of horrible things. Let's try putting the lower limit to zero. And we're just going to mess around with the custom turret controller. I'll drop that next to our power. So pop open your build menu with the left stick, cycle through until you reach your programmable block, and then bring in your custom turret controller. Now, if you've watched my other tutorial on this, it's really simple. Go into this, open its control panel, and now you'll get some errors, but that's all right. We need the azimuth rotor, so assign that, and the elevation rotor, assign that. And that's all we want to do for now, because we're going to use this to refine our hinge. So if you bring in third person, push up on the D-pad while holding the right bumper, you'll see we've got our hinge. So let's add the custom control on the D-pad by holding up, finding our custom turret controller, pressing A, nipping down until we hit control, press A on that, and now when we push up on the D-pad, You'll see we have control of the turret here. And if we push down, the turret goes down. We push up, the turret goes up. And you'll see that it won't go past. If you keep pushing up, it's not going to go past zero. And that's exactly what we want. So now we want to look at what that is. And so now we want to look at where our angle might be. So we don't want it pointing straight up like that. So we may want our turret to kind of look like this. Maybe bring it forward a bit more. Probably about there. So now press X. Control panel. Hinge elevation. Now you come down here. It's 38 degrees. So now we look at our lower limit. And what we do with that is we hit A twice and type in 38. And we control that turret again. Straight forwards, push up, hinge locks at 38 degrees. That's pretty much perfect. This thing's a bit slow, so what you can do is you can come back into your hinge settings and you can just rack up, uh, sorry, not your hinge settings, apologies, custom turret controller settings, and you can just rack up the speed on here to 30 and here to 30. Now, you'll see that when we come back into our turret, it's now moving a lot more sort of like it should. Right, let's have a look at building this turret. If we're approaching it with survival in mind, making, say, like a quad cannon uh, defense turret, there's one thing you can do. Um, see this here? Normally, when you connect to a large hinge, with our weapons. Actually, I've just suddenly thought we can do something else. Uh, apologies for this. Let's do, let's, let's make a bit of a change. I love doing these kind of things because this really isn't a tutorial. This is all about having fun. Let's grind off this and just slightly change things up a bit because I'm used to doing the bigger turrets. Let's do a small grid, super gridded turret instead. So go to here, go to your hinge, and just pop in a small head. 
now we are laughing we got this now we got a small head that will be more interesting because we can make a small grid turret and if we're going to connect this up to actually feed ammunition if you look at the way convey junction works we'll see you've got conveyor sorters medium tubes and so on and you'll notice that also on this list are small conveyors and that's what you want now this isn't going to work and i'm only doing this to show you that the connection won't actually work between your gun turrets just throw on an auto cannon I'm going to be using the auto cannons in a bit you'll see there's no green light means it's not connected to your conveyors but if you throw in small conveyor oops have I put the right place just let me make sure uh, yep that should be if I've got this right actually it probably won't work because I haven't got anything connected to the system but um, let's see if I can quickly oh, I can't really do that Basically, if you need to connect it up anyway, these will work as long as this advanced rotor is connected to your ammunition feed on the ship. If you try it with these three here, it won't work. But we're not bothered with um, building this for survival at the moment. I just want to show you how to do a staggered gun turret. Let's just change time of day because it's gone dark. Let's bring the sun back up. There we go. So, without messing about, let's let's do this. So, I said you need timer blocks. So, we put four timer blocks on this. kitten is running around like a mad thing but one two three four like so and then we'll slap on here four right position there we go it's better This has got to be um, one of my favourite blocks that Space Engineers has ever done. We won't bother with a camera because we'll be using our control seat for the time being. We can slap a camera in the middle if we so desire. And now we have our turret, kind of. Let's just go here to the custom turret controller and just let's add in our four auto cannons this and tool and weapon see and we have correct three immense firepower like so now here's the timer block stuff now you're going to need to do two things one first of all press x to come out of the control of the custom turret open your terminal both bumpers and the back button 
or the share button or whatever you want to call it on the Xbox pad. Two squares, as I always call it. And you want to set up your timer blocks like this into a group. And we're going to call this gun stop. Just so we know what it is. Save it off. Now, let's look at setting up what we want to do. Well, the first timer block and all timer blocks subsequently, we group them again. We take the delay down to one second. Can't take it any lower. So, first timer block, we set up its action. And we tell it that we want to fire Auto Cannon 3. And we want it to shoot once. Then, press B. And we want to find timer block 2. And we want to start timer block 2. Like so. Now we come back out of that. We press B again. <clears throat> and we go to timer block 2. Set up actions. And we want this one. So we've got auto cannon 3. So now we want auto cannon 4. And we want to tell that to shoot once. And then we want... Timer block one, we've got timer block two. We want to start timer block three. And like that again, come down to timer block three. Set up actions. We want this to fire auto cannon five. And we want it to start timer block four. And we want to come back out of that. Timer block four. Set up actions. Shoot auto cannon six. Woods. Now, we want this to loop back and start timer block one again. So now, once it's done a sequence once, it will then repeat it. Every second, one of those guns will open fire. All that done. Let's move on to the D-pad. So on the left direction, we're going to start timer block one. This will start the whole sequence off. So we start that. Now, to stop the whole firing sequence, we want to push right on the D-pad till we bring up the toolbar config. And this time, we want to go to groups, and we want gun stop. And basically, you'll see you've got start, stop, so on, stop. And so now, you'll see we've got control of our gun turret. It's a bit tricky because these things are... You'll see, though, that timer blocks aren't exactly the greatest way to do it. Although, I may have done this wrong, because I may have set this up on the D-pad and not the control block, but we'll, uh, we'll sort it. This is what I love about doing these things live. Like I said, it's not a tutorial, it's just me messing around with the game. This will probably go up on D-Wolf one plays. So let's get at these timer blocks. All that. Well, it should be able to stop all that. For some reason, this gun just does not want to stop firing. Let's see, what have I done wrong? I accidentally caught shoot on. Well, let's, let's take all these auto cannons. Turn them off. Right, there we go. I probably put it on shoot rather than once. Testing it. Right. Let's clear that. 
and we clear that i probably should have done it off the actual custom turret controller rather than put it just based on the d-pad so let's try that again first of all we'll double check things so we'll make sure our timer blocks are set up correctly set up actions so auto cannon three shoot once timer block two start timer block two Cannon four, shoot once. Cannon block three, start. Cannon block three. Set up actions. Water cannon five, shoot once. Cannon block four, start. And timer block four. Doop, 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 doop. Shoot once. Timer block. Start. Right. Make sure that's done. Check gun stop. Now we'll make sure they were actually on our custom turret first. Let's try that again. Got nothing there. No, oh, that's good. So, how to get this to work properly? Let's try it again. Maybe it'll work this time. I want time of block one. And I want to start timer block one. I want to stop all the timer blocks. As you can see, it's not exactly the best method for doing it. It does do it, but it's very hit and miss compared to giving the AI control of the thing. Trying to get a, a sort of delay on this i mean we can try say three or two seconds maybe changing the delay will work this is the basic method of how you kind of do it so let's let's try let's try bringing the delay up to three seconds maybe the shorter delay has been a pain reason it's decided that that cannon does not want to stop shooting <laughs> even though um, it's a strange bug because it wasn't doing that earlier and you see the weirdness you can do with time, um, with this new custom turret control block and your drills two three four set up actions that's any better That gun just seems to be the pain today. Not sure why it wants to keep on shooting. It could be glitched. Or 
Or I may have accidentally... Auto Cannon 5, so we can check Auto Cannon 5. Range that. That Auto Cannon. Does not want to be our friend. These things uh, let's move auto cannon five from this, put it on again. I may have accidentally hit shoot on instead of shoot once. These things do happen. <laughs> the fun of all things considered. Now, let's see. Back to the auto cannon again. So, auto cannon three, four. I probably hit that without realising it, which could explain why. Let's have a look. Okay. You see, this is quite slow. But it's good to see they're firing off in sequence. And that's always the fun with space engineers, is working out what's gone wrong, how to fix it. Let's try this now at a delay of one second. There you go. So they're now firing in sequence. If you want to see what the AI can do when the AI is in control of a turret like that. And we go, and it stops. So that was the problem. That auto cannon was set on to shoot rather than shoot once. There you go. Problem fixed. There's the Danube, so we're going to use the Danube as target practice again. So if I go into the custom turret controller and just turn the AI on this time. Enable the AI, push the aiming radius up. And when you're using a small grid turret controller, it's a 600 meter range. If you're using a large grid, it's an 800. So if you build a small grid turret, these guns actually have an 800 um, meter range. So you can control the small grid turret with the large grid controller. You don't need a small grid controller unless, of course, you've got a small grid ship. But this thing is useful target practice. panel on this one hold down the right bumper actually first of all select the door hold down the right bumper and the left bumper double tap eight and transfer to the space pirates and get out of the way it's my daca you see the ai in this regard actually staggers the guns as it fires Yeah, 
that is how to make this work using timer blocks but a little trial and error pretty cool one of my longer videos on space engineers like i said it's not a tutorial it's just me playing the game messing around with the custom turret controller but with a bit of a tutorial attached to show you how things work specifically done for roger armstrong to show him um, that you can get this kind of thing functioning and uh, there's some interesting things you can do as well with the custom turret controllers and so on you can build if you want a controlled drill rig um, let's see if I can do this just uh, let's extend this platform if anyone's looking for a, a tutorial it's not tutorial day this is fun day a Monday fun day up there like that because I'm in creative, I'm building with line mode. And if you want to know how to turn that on, go to the right stick and you'll see you've got multi-block building. Make sure that's set to line. Change it, plane, line, single. And then once it's line, confirm it. So let's see. I'm going to be messing around with a drill. I think I want to make an impact in the side of this cliff. Yeah, well, not so much a cliff, a hill. Uh, I want to. I want to put. My router there, so I'm going to need layer junction because I actually want to put this into a system. So let's get let's go for the industrial refinery. I love the look of that from the heavy industry pack and honestly some of my favorite conveyors sit um, in the area here these are some of my favorite conveyors just because they look so so good I'm going to replace that as well. So I want the conveyor pipe junction from here. Right, let's see now. Do I want to build it? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to build it. Yeah, I'll build it from the top of this. So what I want first is I want a rotor. My advanced rotor back, because we're going to connect this through to a system. And I hope that you're yeah, having a good day. While I just think on how I want to do this, I'm thinking actually I might want to the height of this thing. I want to step it down a bit make my life a lot easier yeah I'm 
going to play around a little here with via pipe junctions just because I, I really want to mess about on space engineers because I very rarely get a chance to to have a play more than anything so much fun just to mess about with the game for once so let's see we'll pop an advanced router up here like this oh, sorry that's a regular router we don't want you go away we want the advanced there we go and we're going to call this advanced router 2 and I want advanced road two as a must because we're going to be using the custom turret controller to do an interesting thing. So now we've got that, we actually have. Hold on a moment again. I'm going to change the time of day once more. See if I can. Be better this one there we go so we want a hinge now I mean I could have deleted my anti-aircraft to make things easier but we're gonna do this I wait hinge and just to make sure things are working we're going to throw in a control panel down here all seat station and we're going to need two custom turret controllers on this one we'll start with this one first Got that, that, and we're going to put this here like so. And uh, my advice with Sam, which is this one, this hinge should be this one. Let's name this. We're going to just call it Elevation 2, I think. Hello, kitten. What are you doing? Boop. I can't hear him in the background, but he's running around a bit. Here we go. There we go. Let's see. Custom turret controller, custom turret controller. Ooh. First things first, we're going to assign its azimuth rotor. And its elevation rotor on this is drill. No, it's no linked weapon or tool on this one so ignore the warning and then go to your custom turret controller station 2 and put control on the d-pad and then let's have a look so now we have control of this bit save off in case things go horribly wrong we can always reload um, I'm gonna put let's see um, I'm gonna put this actually straight forwards because I need to judge the distance I want to play around with on this 
And these custom turret controllers can be used for all sorts, uh, including welding arms. And you can do a custom welding arm that you could control from a station. I want to use conveyor pipe junctions on this just to keep it. I could always do that. Let's try two there. Three. Um, then I'm going to put another hinge down. Like so. And then on top of that hinge, I'm going to place. One, say four. Let's just have a quick. Because this is why we need our second custom turret controller. Roly, roly, and probably going to have another hinge. Let's see if I can pick up its control panel. Oh, no, I can't get at it. Okay, we'll use this. Should be the one. that that actually I think let's set the custom turret controller three up first so now we want our elevation router to be the drill head and this time we're going to actually link this drill head we're actually going to put a drill on the end of this you have to be careful with this because this can be a bit fragile now we'll link that in on the custom turret controller number three Number three, and this time we can actually pick the drill as our tool. And every time we hold down the right trigger while controlling that assembly, we will activate the drill. Or we can put the drill on to um, just keep on running. But each time you switch control between the two custom turret controllers, it'll turn the drill off. Oh no, the kitten's gone crazy. Um, he just flew past me at high speed. Oi. What are you doing? <laughs> right. So let's see how this handles the turn of the drill without share inertia tensor. Ooh, that's a bit rough. Okay, so let's try finding our two hinges here. And here. Funny share inertia tensor on that. Funny share inertia tensor on that. Much smoother. Uh, my advice as well is probably to stick up the torque on your hinges as well. Because uh, we're in experimental mode, we can actually play around with pushing the torque all the way to its maximum. And that will make this whole drill arm a lot easier to control in the long run. So push down on the D-pad when you're out of the custom turret controller and let's put this one on. Custom controller 3 and we want to control this. 
Now, when we control this, we have control of the drill head. So we'll save. As I said, this can be a bit fragile. Just very carefully mess around with it. Sort of get where you want the hole to be. You could put pistons in this as well. There you go. Like I said, it can be fragile. And this is why we have the quick load. Now, we've lost the functionality to hold both bumpers down and quick load. So we have to go to the replay tool and hit reload world. And while we're quick loading, like I said, this can be fragile. Um, it's one of those things you can adjust it or you could just literally have that drill arm and then attach a piston so the drill you don't use a hinge to tilt the drill down the drill's always down you have the piston and then you can just move the drill arm uh, left and right and then drop the piston where you want uh, 10 meters or whatever you want 20 meters if you want to put a couple of pistons on it but you can uh, basically create your own little custom drill rigs and things like that. This will take a little bit longer to load in than I would like because I am running quite a few mods because um, this is my map I often use for mod showcases. Um, we are back. Let's see, Let's try that again, shall we? Now you could have a camera on this rig as well. Right, let's just leave that drill just to do its thing. There, for a minute. And you'll notice if you leave the trigger, it won't do anything. So what we want to do is we do want to put this drill uh, come out of the there. And we just want to go to all blocks. We want to find our drill. And we just want to toggle it on and off. So yeah, we'll leave that drill running. And you should be able to hear the refinery ticking away. And there you go, look. Pulling in stone. Popping things in. When you reach this point in survival and you've got access to all those blocks needed to build it, you could find this is a much better way of doing things. Um, we can actually adjust our drill head to be a bit more um, effective by pushing up the thing. You'll notice the drill is turned off and then we can just swing it again and again, if you push it too hard, that happens. But it's good to show you that these things do this. So you might want to refine this yourself. It can be, as I said, a bit fragile. The drill heads on this only take a little bit of a tap and they tend to explode dramatically. Um, but the reason we put a conveyor here and we didn't just attach the drill directly like that is that you have some protection for your hinge as well so if there is a bang it will only destroy one or two conveyors and the drill but yeah that i mean that is the basic idea of that so let's look at bye bye hinge let's look say uh like i said my different design for this pop another one of these in 
and the great thing with this is when you're playing around with like pistons you can measure where you want this drill rig piston to go so that will give us some distance right here so if we pop a drill on this lot we no longer need our second custom turret controller in this either because oh, messing around drills and that's actually pretty good there so now what we want to do is we want to set up our piston we want to look in the piston and we'll name this uh, we'll name this piston drill so we know it's attached to the drill anyway always name your things and we'll put share inertia tensor on that one uh, velocity is 0.5 we probably want it to come down to 0.1 do some slow drilling maximum distance is 10 minimum distance I'm just going to check this on my things. Yeah, okay, that's good. So, that is that. We don't need that second custom turret controller, so we can actually remove that. drill notice you can't add um, blocks into the custom turret controller itself so you've got to do it from your d-pad before you take control so what we want is we want the drill again and it on save again I'm a great fan of incremental saves when you're messing around with stuff like this. All it takes is one. So just the drill head so it's a bit more towards the ground. So, and then let's add the piston onto the D-pad coming out of the custom turret control. Go to the piston and we just want it to reverse so we can pull it back up if needs be. So now... Instead of breaking down your um, rig like we used to, we've now got a manual control of where we drill. So we can literally drill down into a hole. When it gets to 10, Meters. Tracked the drill. There you go, look. Now hitting the better quality stone. And if you wanted to, you could make a spinning drill head and you could put that piston on a timer block so it did uh, one, uh, about a half a metre every rotation. Say every um, minute, it could go down half a metre. And uh, I've got tutorials on how to make timer block drill rigs on the channel. Let's pull that piston back up.
with share inertia tensor on the piston there, it's actually strengthened the drill head as well. So there's less likely to be any clang like we've had a couple of times there. And uh, we're coming up to almost an hour of Space Engineers, which is a rarity for me. But then again, this is a D. Wolfie one plays Space Engineers rather than a tutorial. Uh, but then again, I can't help when I'm playing Space Engineers talking about what I'm up to and talking about how to do things as we're doing it. And uh, this is always a lot of fun to mess around with. It's like sticking um, small grid railguns onto a tiny fighter and uh, when you fire and watching it knock the fighter out of the air because it runs out of power. Almost to the top. Get to the top. We can recite the drill. Now, when we move into the custom turret controller, our drill head will continue because we're using the same controller. Now, in theory, you should just be able to skip the drill carefully across the surface of the ground and because we're using the drill head there in that but an interesting thing about this is because the custom turret controller could have that drill head as a weapon we can if we want go to the drill head on this add that and now we have the drill head so we can manually drill as well and again we can quite happily begin to extend the piston mount the control station Turn the drill back on and sink a new hole. There you go. So that might give you some ideas for some things you can do with the custom turret controller beyond turrets. Um, I first saw this on Dr. McKay's Gaming. I'll leave a link to Graham Anderson's channel in the um, description. Um, Graham is a a friend of mine and a member of the Space Engineers Xbox One community on Facebook and we all try and support each other so uh, along with Paul Thompson um, who creates some incredible mechs and so on again I have his channel linked down at the bottom of mine um, so if you want to visit Paul for his absolutely cracking mech and other builds feel free and if you're not subscribed to this channel, um, please do so. And also, a like on the video does help out. Um, it helps out with the algorithm, helps more people see content like this. And if you've got anyone who's new to Space Engineers, or if they're looking for a place to start, or you're just interested in seeing my content, drop by my new Player Guides playlist. I've got everything from setting up the game right from the start, to playing your first few hours in survival uh, i've been playing this now on the xbox for nearly two years uh, i used to play on the pc until my game rig uh, went up in smoke literally thanks to repeated power cuts by the electricity board where i live messing around with the substation without telling anyone uh, i was out i came back and found that uh, my PC was worse for wear. Fortunately, there wasn't actually any permanent damage done to the room, but it had caused the uh, power supply to go bang and destroy the motherboard and so on and so forth. Anyway, that's it for me. I'm coming up to almost an hour, so I will say stay safe, take care, have fun, enjoy the game. I'll be back again with an extended look at warfare 2's free update that's all the weapons all the mechanical changes and so on 
and then after that i'll be doing a look at what you get when you pay for your warfare 2 broadside pack until then bye for now